Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. I know we're going to have a wonderful conversation today. And because I'm using my psychic telekinesis to predict the future, like I always do, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. And that is to go ahead and share this interview because friends don't let friends miss out on Ask Sharifa. So go ahead and share it while I go ahead and introduce today's guest. Ooh, you're going to learn a lot from this woman, I tell you. She is the VP of Strategy at Alpha Investing. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi, Sharifa. I am fantastic. It's so nice to be here. And for everyone, um, Sharifa, we were just having such a fun little intro to ourselves because you were like, I am great at interviews and not great at names. And I said, well, my name does not make that any easier. So I'll make it really easy for everyone. My name is Adapia Dorico. Um, and indeed, I am the VP of strategy at Alpha Investing. Um, it's a real estate investment firm, but I really, I do so much more. Um, that firm is like a little gem in what I consider to be this like great life that I've been able to design for myself. Yes, yes, yes. So I, you know, I didn't want to be unprofessional, although people who tune in to Ask Sharifa often will say, I can be unprofessional at times. So I had to have our guest introduce herself, <gasps> the horror, but I wanted to do her name um, justice and reading it was so beautiful that I knew I was going to chop it all up with her resume. I know I couldn't do anything wrong to her resume. Now, again, you are a VP in what I consider a very male dominated industry. Would you yeah. agree, disagree? Oh, definitely agree. I mean, choose finance, technology, or real estate, because we're kind of in all three. And so it's, you know, aside from maybe science, it's probably the three most male dominated industries um, that we've got. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask maybe a sexist question, but that's the mood I'm in right now. When you were a little girl, you know, you were dreaming of the future, yeah. whatever you wanted to do, was this what you always thought you would be a VP of a company or did you think it would be, you know, something a little different? Um, well, when I was really little, I wanted to be a marine biologist. So, you know, that's like, you know, swimming with dolphins and that's really what I wanted to be until I was five. But then, you know, actually, um, yeah, I got into, um, finance and investing from a really young age, I wanted to be in business. I saw myself as a really strong, I wanted to be like this strong woman. And mm -hmm. to me, that meant being in business. Um, and so I got here and uh, not easy uh, at all. The path is not easy, but I kind of got where I thought I would once I hit that sort of teen, um, that like teenage years where I was like, wait a second, marine biology is fine and all that. But, you know, I kind of got to pay my mortgage because I want a mortgage because I want a house because I want a car because I want the things that I thought um, equal to successful life. Mm -hmm. And so you, did you then go directly into this field or was there a journey along the way? Um, it's been, it's been like a, like a loopy journey. I actually started in banking when I was 19. Like oh, wow. I was like ambitious. I'm like, I'm going to the top, <laughs> you know, I'm just like starting when I'm 19. Um, and I did, I did really well in banking, um, personal, personal financial planning actually. And so I'm actually really grateful for that. I feel, um, it's one of my passions is to help people really understand, like, it's really mm -hmm. important to understand your finances and how money works, how debt works, how loans work, how 401k works. Um, and I took a little journey throughout all of this when I moved to Europe for a while to do a university exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into entrepreneurship as well. And my entrepreneurial journey took me away from finance and into like the polar opposite, which was um, the entertainment and um, the arts industry. And mm -hmm. so I was an entrepreneur for many years doing brand development and intellectual property development. Um, and uh, I landed back in LA after 11 years in Europe and um, kind of got here when it was Silicon Beach, when Silicon Beach was starting. And so I had this entrepreneurial background, um, plus like my business background, because I have uh, business degrees. And I kind of landed in the middle of this and got connected with um, what was called uh, real estate crowdfunding at the time. So it was like, hey, let's invest in real estate, but do it online. So it was a brand new industry and I jumped in. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Anytime you speak with the entrepreneur, it's just one of those standard questions I ask that I always know the answer to. It's like, was your route here the most direct route? Did you just wake up one day and like, I'm going to be a VP. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do in my life. It never, ever happens that easy. You know, but for me, I love speaking to entrepreneurs and why I love doing my video cast is because even now more people are coming in and listening to your story. I want to welcome Terrell, Jewel, Tammy, Sorrento, Edmund, Edmund Turner says, hey, hey, Edmund, oh. Essie Bull. So many people are watching and I just released my book, you know, Signs You Might Be an Entrepreneur. <laughs> my latest one, and I, and I know the entrepreneur journey very well, simply from being laid off over seven times and just life and having that sort of experience. So we know we never just go from easy street to here. But one of the things that, that you said that was very interesting to me is that initially when I went to college, I went to college to be an mm -hmm. accountant. And so now everybody's like, what are you, are you doing anything near accounting? No, but I, I, it helps with business. It definitely helps with business. So important. So important. Yeah. You mentioned you went into banking at 19. Mm. One of the things that I noticed that people are fighting to change is the ability for credit card companies to come on college campuses and mm. give those um, free credit cards out. Yeah. Were you one of those people in college, 19 years old, in the banking field, getting all the brand new credit cards or what did what were some of the lessons that you learned around that oh what a great question i have to really think about that was a long time ago i'm like i'm 40. well okay so when you start at a bank like you are doing bank accounts and you kind of like move up to doing credit cards and, and mortgages and like yeah people were definitely using credit cards a lot back then but it was different to the way um, I feel like we use credit now. And just, it's so easy to get these credit cards. Um, I think they should come with a lot more education, like an understanding that, hey, like if you don't pay your credit card, that's 20, 30% basically annual compounding. Um, that, that really creeps up. Same thing with student loans, like a lot of people don't understand. And it's no one's fault, right? Like I feel really fortunate that I learned these things as because I chose to as a profession but a lot of people are, are just like you wouldn't know unless you decided to learn like the tax system mm -hmm. the keeping debt um, interest you know what that means because people are paying off credit cards with credit cards mm -hmm. and can I share a really interesting statistic um, absolutely yes um, cause I do, um, I do speaking like I, I do like on top of like my job, which I love, um, mm -hmm. I do, uh, corporate speaking and keynote speaking. Mm -hmm. And so I walk into a lot of companies and one third, and this is a statistic, one third of people in America, or, or maybe it's actually two thirds of people in America can don't have enough money to pay an emergency, um, cash situation. And usually those are two things, car repairs or like new tires, like a car repair or healthcare. Right. And two thirds of people bankrupt, go bankrupt um, because of healthcare and they have insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's That's like- a horrible statistic, a horrible reflection on, on America. It's, you know, and, and we don't, and a lot of people don't know any better. And, and then it costs productivity for a company. So even if you're an entrepreneur and you have like an even one employee, mm -hmm. if they're worried that they can't pay their rent because also home ownership in America is getting impossible. Like you can't, you know, you can't save up for down payment for a home. I don't mean to like be like all like down about finance, but like these are the realities of, of like, you got to get, you got to know this stuff so that you can get to the point where you're like, I'm going to build some wealth so I can invest in things like real estate. But I got to start with like Sharifa, what you said, like credit cards like mm -hmm. how they work. And um, yeah, it's kind of scary that they're going on to college campuses and starting that right away because the only people making money are the credit card companies that get your interest payments every month. Yes, absolutely. No, you're not a downer at all. These are <laughs> I ask that question, you know, because I'm one of those people who believe 
and research and statistics have shown that most Americans are living one paycheck away from bankruptcy or away from losing everything. And I just, look, I think that's horrible. You know what I mean? We live in America. America is supposed to be one of the greatest places ever, but that's because we're an American. We're a little biased, you know, but how can the majority of Americans, and that's across the board, except for a few, you know, minorities, almost everyone else in America is at the same place, that they're okay, they're enjoying their life, they're going to work, but one health challenge, yeah. one you know, car accident that wasn't their fault, but they still have to pay the deductible. Yeah. You know, one issue away from their life as they know it not being the same. Yeah. So I don't think it's a downer to help people with prevention and say, let's, let's look at some of the things that you can do in order to avoid that, to have some money in the bank, to have some savings. A lot of people yeah. don't have, even have a savings account these days. Yeah. What are some of the, the suggestions or advice or recommendations that you can give? Yeah. So I think that one of the easiest things to do, it's like, um, it's forced savings. So mm -hmm. it, it's like when, you know, you're, you're, you get a direct deposit for those of us who get direct deposit, have a, an automatic withdrawal that you withdraw automatically to a savings account. Mm -hmm. So that basically by the time you check your bank account on the day that you get your, um, uh, like your income, you've mm -hmm. already got the $50, maybe it's $50 a month, but you start, just put that away in an account that you can't touch. And like you promise right. yourself, you make somebody promise you, you're not touching that. That's your savings account. Um, that's like a, that's called forced savings. So you start having, um, having that, um, if you can, uh, invest in a 401k because, mm -hmm. um, another just crazy statistic is that there probably will be no social security by the year 2035. That is 15 years from now. Yes. And, you know, so it's like, if your company has 401k, mm -hmm. put your money in, even if it's not matching, um, even if the company doesn't match, put your money in because you save on taxes. So you're, it's actually like money in your pocket. It might not look like it, but it actually does at the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. so like anything that's forced savings is a really great thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, paying down your student loans, paying down debt first, mm -hmm. um, you know, in addition to have this, like, and like I said, it's like $50 a month, right? It doesn't have to be a lot of money, but it'll pay like after a year, that's $600. So yeah, if you do need to change your tires, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I can change my tires. But then in the meantime, you want to be paying down any debt and student loans being your number one thing that you want to start paying down because that, that stuff really creeps up really fast. Yes, it does. I mean, because back when we were teens we went to school went to college so that we can have a better life yeah. now i have student loans you know and i'm like oh my god the, i would love to be able to do more with these student loans but hey you, you live i remember yeah. being on the college campus getting the credit cards that i applied for and i was like oh my god they're giving me money you know mm -hmm. now I'm like yeah. oh, i wish i just said no or had some experience or someone to, to give me some type of guidance on what to look for. What, you know, mm -hmm. what is an APR? You know, yeah. you're reading through all this information and some of it is like, well, oh, th they'll know that, you know, they're, they're college kids. Yeah. But, you know, a few years ago, we were just you know, teens running around outside. Nobody so, knows. Yeah. No, I mean, nobody knows. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, that requires money a lot of times to start, yes. right? Or your time, like, or both. And so like being able to like understand like what some of your dreams are and even just saving up for a dream, like maybe your savings account is, you know, you want to take a trip and reward yourself. And so like, there's different ways that, that you can do it. But even when you get on that entrepreneurial journey, like if you don't want a steady job, you, you know, <laughs> like you got to make money somehow. Yes. Um, and, you know, the there's a lot of ways that people think that they can make you know maybe easy money like oh i'm going to be an instagram influencer yeah it's not right. that easy i just not doesn't work that way um there's a whole industry around these social platforms being just marketing machines and you need somebody to do that for you so it gets like overly complicated um so i think it's like being realistic honestly like speaking to other people who have experience in this like hey how was your journey how did that work for you mm -hmm. and because we see people who are successful and we're just like, oh man, they have it so easy. Look at them. They right. got there. But like, 
gosh, getting there or even staying there and even staying there and then trying to get to like what your next level is, it's a lot to consider, right? It, it's not, it's not instant and um, having a good foundation, like whether that's like an internal foundation, which is something I really like to talk about, like knowing who you are, being strong in yourself, having a supportive community, but also having a financial foundation, um, mm -hmm. or at least the understandings of it so that you can truly build this life that, um, that will enable you to do what you want to do. Absolutely. And if you are just now joining us today on this conversation, we are discussing finances, little strategy there on how to put the money away for a rainy day. But if you are just now joining us, Maureen, thank you for coming in. E. Mandiza, Melody, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please, please ask them in the comment section. I'll go ahead and read them to our guests. But we've been discussing so much about finances. <laughs> talked a little bit about your journey, which we, we know was went around the, the mulberry bush and, and back again. Yeah. But what are some of the lessons that you learned through, through your struggles and through your journey? Oh, wow. So many lessons. Um, mm -hmm. So it's funny when you, you, you know, your book, like signs that you're an entrepreneur, the first thing that came into my mind was like, I was stepping on so many toes when I was working at, like in like my companies in the beginning. Cause I was like, Oh, Hey, look, let's make that better. I mm -hmm. see something that I can like improve or make efficient or make it better. And like, yes, that was a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. Nowadays, I think a lot of companies like a little bit more of an entrepreneurial spirit and even companies are, are saying like, you know, the command and control way of doing things is over. Mm -hmm. Right. There is no command and control. There's a hierarchy of roles and responsibilities, but like the days of like, I'm your boss and you have to do what I say are over. Um, right. And it comes down to this personal leadership. And that's like one thing that I've learned is super, super important is if you want to lead anybody else, you have to be personally responsible and accountable to yourself. Mm -hmm. So like self mastery, personal leadership is really important and personal accountability. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, yeah, I did that. Like, um, I made a mistake. I learned, um, I let my ego get in my way. Like all the ways that we, you know, try not to admit that we're less than perfect in, in whatever way. Um, I think it's really important to have that level of humility. And that's something that I really learned because I was so ambitious and I simultaneously was like super ambitious, but then I really wanted people to like me and I couldn't understand why they didn't because I was like stepping on their toes and, and, and making them look bad. And all I really wanted was to show them like how enthusiastic I was and like, look how good I am at doing whatever. Um, it's just like realizing like the impact that you have mm -hmm. on the people around you was one of my biggest, biggest lessons. And when I learned to harness that and be like, okay, this is how I am and who I am. And this is the impact I have on somebody else. So like I might come on really strong, or um, like learning to read people and learning to work with them um, as opposed to just like wanting my way, even if it was well-intentioned, was really important. So my own personal leadership and really understanding myself so that also I could just be a better person, a better collaborator, um, eventually like a better leader to others as well. So that's a super important um, lesson for me that happened over and over and over again until I finally, you know, figured it out. Oh, wow. I love that answer. That was an amazing answer. You have a few different things that I want to touch on, but one of the things that stands out to me is you know, we, I just see so many similarities. It may, may seem crazy now, but I see so many similarities. And I remember once when I was working at a job, and this was years ago, where my manager said to me, she said, Sharifa, you intimidate people. And mm. I told her, I said, I don't intimidate people. People are intimidated by me. You know, so that's a weakness yeah. on their part, not an action I'm taking on, on my part. So it's like in, in, in employment and working with people, you do, you learn to adjust. You learn when you're being, you know, overly excitable, when you're, be, you're the one who's over anxious or you want to make sure it's perfect. So you got to make sure everybody does everything right. But a lot of that is just maturity as well. It's just growing and growing up. So I was like, oh, yeah, I, I've been in those situations where people, where I'm like, okay, well, maybe I need to take it down a little bit for yeah. other people. We also had a, a comment, from the comment section from Jewel, 
who I, I'm going to make sure I'm going to try to answer this or ask this correctly. So, Jewel, if I need some help. Um, please, you know, let me know. But Jewel says trying to have all the licenses to build a business is like for every step it is another downfall. Mm -hmm. She's different cities require different things and it's a headache. So I'm not sure if that was a question or a comment. I'm just sharing with you Jewel's thoughts on having different certificates or different licenses required for different cities. Has that been your experience? Um, it, it's interesting when you first said licenses, I was thinking of all the like licenses that I had to get to like mm -hmm. practice uh, financial planning. Um, and then I thought about that and then I thought about all the licenses I had to get to build my house. So right. it's, it's like, it's a really good point to bring up because it, it doesn't, that's not something you necessarily think about. You're like, Oh, I want to start my business. Like, yes. I think if you have a lot of licenses, it might be like a retail business, like brick and mortar where mm -hmm. it probably, so like storefront, um, require, or like food requires way more licenses, like right. liquor, like, and there's a legal, so that brings up legal stuff. And, um, depending on the city I live, um, I live in LA, I live in, in Inglewood actually. So I'm, on, on Inglewood side, um, there are a lot of licenses depending on the kind of business that you want to get in. So when you want to start a business, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a really good point to say, like, look into the costs of, mm -hmm. um, of that. Cause it's time and it's money, right? Like we were talking about having the money to start a business. Um, and, um, speaking to people about like, Hey, like you run this business. Can I, can I ask you some questions? Cause most of the time, um, something I really learned in my career is that, you know, without like trying to bowl people over, um, but people want to share their experience. So if you are an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you're like, Hey, I, I want to start this business and you, you meet other people that are doing it. They're very happy to give you advice. Mm -hmm. For the most part, right? Um, right. They're, they're happy to help and, and give advice and impart some, some wisdom because, yeah, knowing what licenses you need before you go into business and how much they cost and how long it could take could mean the difference between starting a business this year or next year mm -hmm. and the planning that goes along with that. So I hope that helps. No, I think that helps a lot. And she did comment, Jewel comment as well. Food is the worst, but it's what she wants to do. So thank you for that comment, Jewel. So I guess Jewel is considered going into the food business. And food is probably one of the worst, along with different like health uh, practitioners. They have to have certain licenses because yeah. whatever touches your body, whatever enters your body, you you I mean, it has to be the top notch it has to be the healthiest so yeah. yes and also like you were saying earlier the licenses may be for a specific city or specific mm -hmm. state and people find out that licenses here like i have um my aunt who, who's a nurse she's a nurse here but she's moving back to the east coast and she mm -hmm. has to look at the different licenses oh. required there as opposed to the licenses that are required here. Because I'm in Long Beach. Hey, right down the street from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We oh, know. totally different. Totally yes, different. California like. laws are different, <laughs> stringent. So, yes. But the other thing I wanted to touch on when you were speaking earlier about um, how you were and how you learned to kind of adjust for other people and I love the way you mentioned it. You didn't make it like you were dimming your light or that you, you know, you were making yourself small. And, and that's often what we do is like we try to hide in order to not be too big. You know, you're like, hey, I, I'm here, but let me not make my boundaries so out here. <laughs> make them, you know, a little, we're all here. So there, it seems to be to allow for more for everyone. The other thing that I noticed about that comment is that I always tell people, it reminds me of my first job ever out of high school. I was working for Transworld Airlines. So if you remember Transworld Airlines, TWA, you are um, dating yourself a little bit. We know how old you are, but you shared that earlier. It was my first job out of high school. I'm working for this airline. And I, I was kind of like you, you were, and I was like, oh, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing it that way? You know, and they were oh, the horror. They were <laughs> faxing reservations to their uh, reservation to the people traveling. They would get a fax with their airline itinerary. And so, you know, I'm out of high school. I'm this tech kid. I'm like, well, why don't you email them? 
<laughs> and their response to me was, we don't email reservations. We've always faxed I, um, itineraries. We will always fax itineraries. And for anyone listening who does not know the end of that story, is they went out of business. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it's like, I always keep that in mind with any business is that you have to be able to grow. You have to be able to listen to the people. Yeah. And now in 2019, 2019, with all the millennials, millennials are, love to talk about how they feel, what's going on yeah. and share with the company. Has that been your experience as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different way of, um, of living and operating. I find like I uh, was, I was just having this conversation with somebody. So there's like Gen X and there's millennials. And I don't know if you remember this, there used to be a Gen Y. No, I do remember that. I didn't but know what happened. They're to gone. It's, it's been dissolved. It's like, oh it got like sucked up into Gen <laughs> X. Um, and there's some really interesting research about this. So it was like swallowed up by Gen X and like okay. I'm a Gen Y. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's called the forgotten generation. So there's like oh, wow. this whole group of us that were like, we don't really know where we fit. Cause I feel like I grew up old school, mm -hmm. um, really old school, but I also think very much like in, in like a millennial way, let's say. So like for me, like purpose and mm -hmm. meaning and asking why yes. is super important. Like whatever I'm doing, I want it to be meaningful. If I can make an impact on somebody, I want that to be a positive impact because we express who we are through what we do. And a lot of us do it through work. So for, you know, this, and it's funny because when I work with executive teams and they're just like, oh, those millennials. And I'm just like, it's because they don't think that the only thing in life is work. Right. So you have to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And they're just asking why, why should I do this? They're asking what's the purpose? Like what's the larger purpose in life? It's not just, you know, get up, go to work, go home. You, there's a whole other, you know, we live in a time we're so fortunate to be able to have these tools at our disposal to be ourselves, right? Entrepreneurship is a great way to be ourselves. So um, I'm going all over the place, but like the, the whole aspect of work is a way of expressing identity, Mm -hmm. and expressing what I have to give you. And so we want, like, we want to honor that in other people. And that kind of goes back to that personal leadership aspect. And like, if you are working with it, with a, a younger generation, cause I totally get it. I think like that. And I grew up the old way. Like I remember faxing stuff all the time. I use hello fax, by the way, if anybody ever needs to fax. <laughs> I use hello fax as well. Yeah, it's great. It's like, Oh, here's my PDF. Here's my, you know, browser yeah. and I'll just pop it in and it faxes yeah. to like, cause a lot of finance companies like, um, like, uh, like IRA companies that, that do retirement accounts, like yes. they're still using paper yes. and they're using fax. And I'm just like, this is taking a month cause you're, <laughs> um, and so it still exists. So we kind of have to live in these, like this liminal space yeah. of like in between, you know, in between worlds. But, um, yeah, we, like, we want to make sure that we're, we're understanding like how mm -hmm. people operate, how they think, how they feel about work. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and really honor that to bring out, to bring out the best in them because we're, we don't think the same, we don't live our lives in the same way, but we, you know, but we live alongside each other. So I think that getting to that level of communication gets really important. No, I definitely agree. I'm like you, I, I tended to grow up in that, um, you know, more environment, probably the Gen X, you know, way of, or Gen Y, like you were saying, but I tend to understand the millennials, you know, because prior to that, with our parents, you worked at a job for 20 years. You worked at a job for 30 years. You knew, for the most part, when you accepted that job, that was going to be your job. That was going to be your career. And you can count on that. You weren't sitting there like, okay, am I about to be laid off? Well, how long am I going to be here? Is this going to be my two-year plan? Is this going to be my one-year plan? Yeah. Okay, it might become my five-year plan. But yeah. we don't look at it as it's a 25, 30 year plan. This is a retirement plan. When we, especially the millennials, start these positions, it, it's what, how is this benefiting the world right now? And so since it's not a long term they're, and they're not expecting retirement, it has to, like you said, that's why I agree. It, absolutely what you were saying. It has to be something that makes them 
feel as if they're doing something that benefits the world, not just themselves, because they know they're going to be here for only a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so they ask themselves, if I'm going to be here and I could go find the same job, same type of hourly wage, most likely will not have health benefits. Mm -hmm. Why here as opposed to over there? Yeah. Yeah. And they're right. I mean, that there's a, there's a now moment and there's a future moment and give the older generations, we haven't done a really great job of taking care of this planet and each other in some ways. Cause look, we've got social security is gone in 15 years, basically. Like we talked about the debt levels that we're under, um, you know, work isn't the answer to self-actualization. Mm -hmm. But it can be, which is why I think a lot of people go into entrepreneurship because they're like, I want to self-actualize. I want to express. So I'm going to do it my way. I don't want somebody to tell me what to do. But like, um, even in, in what I do now, like we, we invest in like real estate and a lot of our, our investors to them, five years to anyone, even to me, if I think five years, I'm like, gosh, I don't know. That's a really long time. Right. For some things, even though we have to be thinking longer term. Um, so that's why like a set it and forget it with savings is really great. But like we can't really bring ourselves to think that because the world happens so fast that for us, like we might have flying cars in five years. Right. And but like our, you know, the generations, our parents' generations, like flying cars was mm -hmm no way like the, not even in cartoons maybe in their generation but because the flow of information happens so fast and like we get um i think i i saw a statistic that was like 500 years worth of content is watched on youtube a day mm, wow like, we get exposed to so much information and things happen really fast like one thing that one person says might go viral and then mm. all of a sudden all like maybe new policies come out because of it. And it's just, everything happens really fast. And so for us, five years feels like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see like the gig economy and like gig work. And so what does this do? It actually contributes to a sense of instability. Right. And the 20 year job is gone. So we have to find a different way, which is like skill development mm -hmm. and being comfortable in this constant current of change and like, okay, well, I know I'm going to be okay. Cause I have the skills, I have the mindset, I have the heart and I want to do it and I have good intentions mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it happen. And then along with like some planning, but we live in like, it's a really weird time to, to, mm -hmm. to be around. Cause like my company, there's four of us, there's four principals. So we're like a small company. It's a small entrepreneurial company. Um, and you know, there's a lot of challenges still to do that. And, and so we, you know, we live on like, on like a short term basis in terms of like keeping things going with a big long term plan. So it's like working towards that long term plan is really important and like taking those steps mm -hmm. um, to get there. Wow. Okay. So you have four employees. So that's good. That's, that's four a niche. Partners. Yeah. It's four partners. Four. Yeah. We're four. Yeah. So how long have you been in business? Um, the company has been in business since 2014. Uh, okay. and it, so it started, five years. yeah, five years. Yeah. It started as four. I wasn't one of the originals. I came in after, um, four college, uh, MBA, um, colleagues like you know they they went to college together they did their mba together and they started this company together and slowly grew it mm -hmm. and um i was in one of the larger companies uh and i joined them uh last year because mm -hmm. i loved them as people so here's another thing i learned that's really important um choose your people Mm -hmm. Like choose to work for the people if you can. I mean, obviously that's, it's, it's a level of privilege. I would say to, to be able to say that today, cause we can't always do that. But, um, I learned so much about how important it is to really like want to be with the people that you're working with, mm -hmm. because we spend so much time with those people, especially if we're in an office that we want to, we want to resonate. Like we want to be aligned on our goals and our, like what we want. And, um, I love the way that they were approaching business, their integrity, their morals, their ethics, just everything about it. And I feel like, I feel like I found the perfect place for me to be because they want me to be part of the team. They want me to be a partner for what I bring and not making, uh, me out to be like, Oh, you have to fit this role. 
They're like, no, this is who you are. We want you for you. Do your thing because you do it well. Um, and it takes some time to get there in your career, but um, it also means that we're always on the same page about things. And if something's not working, we have a conversation about it and we clarify it and we're very respectful mm -hmm. because we're going to have a different conversation. And it's a very diverse leadership team. There's two women, um, two women on the team. Um, and Fark, who's the CEO, he's actually originally from Nigeria. Okay. And we, and, um, and Ann, who's our underwriter, she's, she's Chinese. So we say Dan is like our token white guy. I hope that's okay <laughs> to say. It's just like, we think it's hilarious um, because he's like, you know, he's, he's it. He's our guy. He's our white man. Um, right. But like, you know, but we just, we just have like such a great time doing what we do. Um, mm -hmm. And we're, we're just all like super authentic about doing the best job that we can for, for the investors that we work with. And it's, it's like a gift to work with them truly. I, I can imagine. I love startups and entrepreneurs. That's what I'm known for is just going from one startup to another startup. Yeah. That's why I've been laid off so many times. You know, <laughs> Everybody's like, just go work for the post office. I don't want to work for the post office. You know, they're already set in their ways. And that's one of the things that I'm always looking for. It's like, you, at least with a startup, you have the opportunity to give ideas and to be a part of the growth of the company. And then you learn a little bit here, learn a little bit here, and you just continue to grow. Now, was this your first startup opportunity or are you more used to the large corporate environment? No. Um, so I started in like really large uh, banks. And then um, when I moved to Europe and I lived there for 11 years, I worked in, um, I guess you, they weren't called startups at the time. They were small businesses, but they was in insurance. And then I was in a hedge fund, which okay. is a small business because it was like a team of 10 people. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I, and, and then I became an entrepreneur. So I started a company. So I've started two or three companies, um, mm -hmm. depending on how you, uh, would classify my, my consulting, um, company. It's like solopreneur. So, mm -hmm. um, so I started, um, a company, uh, I built a brand with my sister who's an artist. You, that's her artwork back there. It's one of her pieces. Um, yeah, she, no, she's fantastic. So, like, so we built a whole brand for her. Um, then I worked with, I did some consulting for companies and then I started a, another company with another woman, uh, entrepreneur. We started a film distribution company, um, mm -hmm. small film distribution company. Um, and then, and then when I came to LA, I, I got in and I was the first employee at, uh, what became a larger, um, more traditionally sounding um, startup company it was technology. It was financial technology company. And so, um, so I've been for the past 10 years, I've been my own entrepreneur, I suppose you could say, like um, starting with what I did with my sister, all the way to helping launch this real estate crowdfunding company. Mm -hmm. And then eventually landing here at, it's called at Alpha Investing and as a partner in, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a small private equity firm. So it, I, I love the entrepreneurial journey. And like I said, like before, when I was in the big banks, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I was the person that, that always wanted to fix everything and find new ways of doing it. And I was the first tech adopter for everything. I was just like, that was who I was. <laughs> yeah. You were like, miss fix it. Just oh my God. And, and you'll take care of everything, every department. <laughs> yeah. If I was at the post office, I'd have like, probably like completely rearranged <laughs> I would in a week I, that would be what I would do the first week I'd let's totally rearrange this it can be more efficient trust me um and I would get fired <laughs> I, would probably, I think I would too mainly because I would decide by myself just single-handedly <laughs> that the stamp should go on the left side of the letter and that anything with it mailed on the right side, the postage on the right side, it's just going to be immediately trashed. We're going to give them about 30 days. And if it's not on the left, I just throw all of America into chaos. I think that's, <laughs> and then I'd be like, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it really should be on the right side. So now we got to go find all the trash yeah. mail and right. actually mail it, you know, but I, I'm known for coming in and just changing things and just, Let's do it my way. I think this way is so much more efficient. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so we be fired together, sitting there trying to figure out our next plan or what we're going to do since we've messed up at the post office. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? We'll head over to the DMV. 
right? Oh my God. Sure, we can make that place better. I think we can make it better. Just the, a little bit of better lighting would go a really long way. Uh, your appointment system, you know, the U.S. government can do things that no one else in the world can do. My um, birthday just passed. It was the 31st of March. And so on around the 9th of March, I realized my driver's license need to be renewed. So I'm like, okay, let me, you know, it's technology. Let me go online, dmv.ca.gov. I know it by heart. You know, certain things, you, you, you know, stick with you. And I'm like, okay, let me schedule my appointment. The first available appointment was June 5th. I'm like, okay, no, this is supposed to be an appointment, you know, prior to my license expiring. The first available appointment they had was in June. So I tried other local, you know, let me go to Torrance. Let me yeah. really yeah. help. So you do the rounds. You start doing the rounds. Uh, yeah, I know. How far I want to go. Might go down to Inglewood or Hawthorne or somewhere, <laughs> anywhere before June 5th. Right. So, I mean, I know we can definitely make that, that place a lot better. Yeah. Maybe go do somebody's books. I, I don't know. Who needs right. their books done? Right. Yeah. Who needs a new strategy? That's, that's I'm, I'm all LA in Unified. <laughs> let's, go, let's, let's go talk to LA Unified <laughs> about how we can, we can build walls, but we can't, you know, get some more books for the students in the mm. school. That's a new, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Yeah. So again, we are live right now on Facebook. I want to thank Dr. Palmer, Zumara, and Angela. Quite a few people who have popped in. Thank you for your questions, your comments, for your hearts, for showing all of the love. I hope you are enjoying today's conversation because I know I am. It's bringing back some old TWA memories today. <laughs> so whew, we've had some fun. Now, yeah. if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and get those in because we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And at the end of every show, I like to allow my guests the opportunity to just look right out, speak right out to our listeners and let them know what you want them to take away from your interview. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think if there's like one thing, because we talked about like so many different things that I would love for you to take away is live a life that's meaningful to you. And that doesn't mean like a lot of people are like, what's my purpose? Like, and they think it has to be like, even maybe listening to us, maybe purpose is like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I have to do something in the world, right? Your purpose is just to be you period. Your purpose is I am me. I know who I am and I want to be the best version of myself. Cause with I'm the best version of myself and like, I'm not stepping on toes. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm having better relationships with other people. Those are kinder, um, more fulfilling interactions. And it's like a domino effect. I really believe that if we understood that our purpose is to be ourselves and understood that about ourselves, we could love ourselves more. And we would be naturally like, we're just nicer. I'm a better person because I understand who I am. And we can, we can all have a really massive impact on each other by knowing who we are. And we get to make better decisions because it's like, oh, I don't have to be what my parents want me to be or mm -hmm. what two generations ago said a job market was like. So it's like, come back to yourself know yourself, trust that knowing that you have and take it out to the world because we need more people to really be themselves. It's not doing, just be yourself. And I promise like things are going to get like just better for everybody. Wow. That was wonderful. I've never heard it stated exactly like that, but when people work with you or work with your company, what can your company help them do? So if, um, for, for alpha investing, so we, um, we provide real estate investments that are generally only for like big institutions. So like if you want to invest in, um, real estate and it's usually not accessible, so we make it accessible. So that's one thing that we've really been able to do because real estate is the best way to build wealth. It's not financial advice. It's my personal opinion, but it's also the, probably the opinion of the wealthiest people in the world throughout history. It's like, it's with real estate. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. And then what I do, that's like, that's like my left brain kind of work. And then my, my right brain, like my soul work mm -hmm. is um, to do keynote speaking and workshops, uh, mm -hmm. like with companies, with organizations. Like I just love going in. I do diversity workshops, leadership workshops, um, 
self empowerment workshops, just like, and even like, you know, financial ones and just like talking really about like, how do we get to that level of what I was talking about? Like loving yourself and being yourself and like self mastery. So that's my soul's work, um, mm -hmm. which I love to do. And then, um, my, uh, my, my more brainy work is, uh, is investing in real estate on behalf of other people. Oh, wow. I love it. I want to go back to your soul work a little bit because we didn't <laughs> get a, a chance to talk too much about that. So you said that you, you're a keynote speaker, but you'll also come and speak to organizations. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be of a certain size? Can you tell us a little bit more of the parameters? No, I will pretty much talk to anybody. Um, <laughs> and like I, I, I do, I, I think like even like small groups, um, sometimes I work just with like a management team to help them understand like diversity or like helping women get into leadership or like minorities. I mean, there's like, that's a whole other topic, mm -hmm. like the, the diversity situation, especially at leadership levels. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but no, it doesn't have to be like, it can be like small groups. Like I really feel like anytime I can get with people and, and connect with them, um, mm -hmm. it's meaningful work. Like that's my, yeah, like I said, it's my soul's work. So, um, mm -hmm. if you're a small organization or a large company and you, you know, do calls for speakers or workshops, um, I mentor executives as well. So I do some mentorship work and, mm -hmm. um, I mentor MBAs at USC Marshall. I forgot. That's just like, but I, that's like pro bono. I just, <laughs> just love to do it. When I'm, I when love I'm it. I love mentoring them. It's so much fun because they're coming out of like business school and they're just like, I'm going, but then mm -hmm. they're like, it needs to feel good. So I'm seeing the shift also in mm -hmm. these MBAs. Cause they're like, yeah, I'm going to go get my big consulting job, but like, I want to feel good about my life. So mm -hmm. it's across the board. It's happening. Like this world is changing. So we have to make sure that we're the ones changing it um, based on like our heart and our soul. I really believe that. Okay. Now, other people who may not necessarily have just stepped out, received their MBA, where they need a coach, do you do any coaching? I don't really do personal coaching um, anymore, but I know a lot of wonderful people who do. So if anybody um, wants a reference or referral, I can definitely give that. Um, I've, I've got like, um, yeah, I just, I don't, I used to a little bit, but I haven't really like, if somebody wants to reach out, I can definitely like talk and see yeah. if there's a fit, but I know a lot of amazing people who just love the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's really important to work with people who are just like, yes, I'm going to help get you there. Um, right. Yeah. No, I know the feeling because I do a lot as far as speaking. I, I love that. I love, absolutely love my video cast and my podcast. And then I'm, that I tell people, oh, I'm a business consultant. I'm like, okay, do you do any consulting? I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> I really like to yeah. do one-on-one -on -one aspect. <laughs> it's not just the one-on-one, -on -one. like I don't have to necessarily speak to 5,000 people. Yeah. But to me, it's the repetitive aspect of doing the one-on-one -on -one cult consulting. Right. You know, it's like, I love to say, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to work on. Do these little things. Go have a nice life. Right. As opposed to the people who every Wednesday at 2 p.m., I have to go sit down with Sharifa. I'm like, no. no, you know what I mean? I kind of want right. to work with <laughs> fix a couple of things and send you on your merry way. If you have some questions, feel free to call me every now and then, but there will be no weekly appointments or monthly appointments. I love helping people kind of like yourself in groups and mm -hmm. kind of at once. That's really my, my thing. So I do like events. I'm more of a bit kind of workshop yeah. kind of, kind of gal. So yeah. tell us about you. What are, what are some things that you have coming up that we can watch out for, look forward to, what do you want to share with our audience? Oh, thank you for that opportunity. Yeah. So I have, um, I'll have a book coming out later this year um, and it's called Journey Home to the Soul, um, Finding Meaning in the Ashes of a Picture Perfect Life. And it's like a little off topic from what we talked about kind of. Um, but um, last year I gave a, I gave a keynote talk and Goalcast, the motivational company, motivational video company, they found it and they made a motivational video out of it. Um, and it went like, super viral, which was crazy and amazing. Um, and it's this, I give this talk, I got on stage and I talked about leaving a first marriage that wasn't working for me. So it's mm -hmm. like a very vulnerable, like I really put myself out there. Um, and this book is the story of everything that I learned about myself um, through that process and through the process of like going back in time and like 
forgiving myself and like letting go of all the shame that I was holding on to and all these ideas of external validation and how we consistently do this. And it really led me into this uh, deeper work of this self mastery. And um, that video and that talk really kind of gave me this opportunity. So I have this book coming out um, and that, that's, that's coming out in the fall. So I've been working on that, like going back and forth and editing right now and getting it to the publisher. So um, that, and really just focusing on doing more, uh, more speaking and, and more group work. I love it. I can just tell. That's why I asked you about the coaching. I know you have a story. <laughs> I, mean, I know you have tons of stories probably. Yes, what do you want to start with? You know what I mean? What day was that? Yeah. <laughs> Like you have a, a ton of stories and th that's not a bad thing It's because you don't look like you're one of those people that plays it safe you know you're afraid to get in the pool you're you're not afraid to do anything you, you're one of those kind of you know yolo kind of people like whatever it is <laughs> I can see you screaming yolo let's go and make it happen so yes i, I knew you had a, quite a story believe me you've been divorced twice so mm -hmm. I understand the lessons, the pain, the love, the past, the growth. Yeah. Oh, so many things just from that one lesson alone. Oh, yeah. So many. And not enough people talk about it, you know. And um, just really quickly, like what was crazy when this video came out and it, and it went viral was like how many people were angry. Mm -hmm. I got so many trolls. Mm hmm and I was like completely unprepared because I was like, oh my God, like mm -hmm. I just, that was, I, had, I had only good intentions about sharing this because shame, mm -hmm. shame and silence keep us in suffering. And I had so many women say, thank you. Right. Thank you for getting up there. Thank you for saying that. Not because I left, right? Like, because like, I stayed for nine years. Mm -hmm. It's not like I was just like, oh, I don't, you know, this is not working. I'm out. Right. It was like a lot more than that, but people really took it personally about it. And, and it really just shows like. They took it personal because you decided to leave? Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. It was wow. really like that whole experience was, was like, and that was a challenging experience for me because um, I experienced my greatest fear, which was rejection. Mm -hmm. And from strangers who misunderstood me didn't so that whole thing was a whole lesson and now i'm prepping for um fingers crossed that um, i'm submitting for doing a ted talk about mm -hmm. that experience of overcoming the adversity mm -hmm. of online criticism and bullying and shaming and then mm -hmm. the, the inner fears that creeped up because I almost quit. I almost said I'm never getting on stage again. That was too scary. I'm never doing a video again. Like I don't, people sent me death threats. I was like, man, dude, you need to chill out. Like, right. I don't even know you. you right. That's crazy to me. And it's scary. It though. It is, but that's the way the internet is. It gives yeah. people the freedom and, and also what they believe is the right to be able to say whatever they want to say about somebody else's life. You know, you shouldn't do this. You should do that. You have to do this. You can't do that. You know, and it's like, I'm agreeing with you. It's like, I don't even know you, you know, <laughs> but even just being an entrepreneur, one of the things that I always tell people that I, I work with is that you cannot ever, ever, ever make all of the people happy all the time, no matter what you do. You know, so if you want to be successful, you really have to understand that and, and keep that in your mind. Because if, if you don't, you don't want to be successful, you just want to go hide your light under a bushel, go ahead. Yeah. But if you want to be successful, you, you know, somebody's going to hate you. Somebody's going to ha hate, you know, your hair, your clothes, you know, you shouldn't have that with no sleeves. And, you know, <laughs> people going to, you know, you wear your sleeves. Look at her shame in that interview. <laughs> She didn't even have sleeves. It's yeah. like so amazing. You yeah. know, sometimes how, what people watch and what people say. And mm. it's like, okay, but she did a whole wonderful interview, how to help people with their financial um, resources. And all you can focus on is her sleeves. You know, so it's just people are in, in, interesting. And I always just say, just do you. Just yeah. do you. And never allow them to make you quit. So you're going to get that TED Talk. We already know that. That's yeah. already done. You'll <laughs> you'll knock them out you know just say hey Sharifa give me a little shout out <laughs> oh for sure for sure yeah <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm just kidding but I won't take it personal when I don't get one so where can people find out more information about you 
Um, so my, my name, even though it's difficult to pronounce is like really easy to find online. Um, mm -hmm. so if you just, if it's adapiaderico.com is my website. And if you just, you know, Google Adapia, I come up, um, mm -hmm. Adapia Derico on Instagram. Um, I'm on Facebook like a little bit. Um, but mostly like if I'm on social, it's going to be Instagram or LinkedIn to be honest is, is like the best place to find me. Um, and then my website and I have a newsletter and I have a blog, um, and that, that's me. Yeah. At piaderico.com. That is so wonderful. And I want to thank you for being a guest on today's episode of Ask Sharif for Videocast. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. I had so much fun today. This is like the best hour of my day. <laughs> ah, thank you. The best hour out of 24. I will take yes. that and run with it. <laughs> and I want to thank all of our listeners, everyone who came in to watch this interview. Thank you for your time. I want to also thank our sponsor, Tammy Sorrento, for joining us today in our live. Everyone, if you are interested in renting a property or maybe renting a vacation property, you definitely want to go to fireballapproves.com to make sure you do not get scammed. That's right. Make sure it's Fireball Approved at fireballapproves.com. If you're interested in watching more of my interviews and being a guest or for sponsorship opportunities, please visit the website at ashsharifa.com. Until then, everyone have a wonderful night. Goodbye now. <laughs>